Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. Now, some of you have probably seen this part because you've been in my advanced fixturing class where we take and we make a bottle opener, but what we do in the class is we put it on a fixture plate. The fixture plate we make is sort of silly because we're just making one of them, but the idea is to teach us how to use the Mighty Bites and things like this. Now, this is a part that you're gonna see made on the machine, one of the machining videos coming up very soon. And so I thought I would uh, do a run through of how I made the soft jaws, which is something I get asked about quite often. In fact, I sort of plan on making three different soft jaw videos at different times, uh, but that depends on if you want to see them or not, the different methods. So if you want to see different methods for being able to make soft jaws, please let me know in the comments down below. And if I don't hear very many comments that people want to do it, maybe I won't make the other two videos. So the three videos I want to do are just drawing a set of soft jaws in place around a part, uh, using the part to subtract out the material from the soft jaws, and then doing something more advanced like this where you actually have a vise with soft jaws set up and you assemble the part into the right spot and use whatever combination you want to use to make the soft jaws on your part. So with the video you're going to see coming up now keeping in mind my stock is really long because I had a, some stock already cut that I was using for the initial run of these bottle openers but the stock I'm going to show in the video is going to be much shorter basically what happens is the part gets uh, roughed out it gets chamfered it gets uh, some different things like that applied just go back to the beginning and slow this down a little bit so it's going to get 3D adaptive roughed get this to a decent speed here and then it's going to be finished with that same tool in different areas. And then some finished machining is going to come onto this part with the ball mill. We won't watch the whole ball mill operation because it takes quite a while to get all that area of the handle surfaced. So that's kind of what OP1 ends up looking like. And for OP2, I chose to use the soft jaws in the M lock vise that I've got set up. I'm really starting to like this setup where I have the front side set up for. Uh, just holding stock in the backside set up for soft jaws, although I'm considering reversing it and putting the soft jaws in the front and holding the part in the back uh, simply because it's easier to kind of this jaw doesn't move or most likely doesn't move as much as this front setup does. So that might be something I'll be making a change to as I move forward. But anyway, let's hop over to this other part and this is the part that we are going to make the soft jaws for. So remember, we've already done this side. We need to flip this up, flip this over and make the soft jaws. So a couple of things before we get started is to note that this bottle opener is free to move wherever it wants to. It was drawn at the origin and the, when it was assembled, it came in origin to origin, but it's free to move now. So I want to start out by going and doing an as-built joint on the bottle opener and the origin. And I'll just go ahead and hit OK. I'm just going to kind of flip this over like this. And now what I want to do is I'm going to go to the symbol menu and say I'd like to create a new component. And that component is going to be soft jaws, if I can spell tonight. And we'll hit OK. So there's my soft jaws component, and it's currently active. So now I am ready to start doing some drawing. I'm going to put my I'm going to start by drawing my soft jaws down on the bottom of this part. So I'm going to create a sketch on the bottom face, and I'm going to delete some of the geometry that's been created. Now, quick tip, if you drag from left to right, anything that's fully bounded by that box will be selected. If you drag from right to left, anything the box touches will be selected. I want to keep this outside arc. I don't want the rest of the geometry. So I'm going to drag from left to right around all the things I want to get rid of. And notice how it didn't select the outside arc there, and I'll hit delete. Now, I've got that. I'm going to toggle that to construction and I'm going to turn construction on and go to create project include project and I'm going to project in this edge right there and I'll hit OK. Now the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to draw a line to help me out from the midpoint over here that's going to help me to center up my soft jaws the way that I want them. Now that I have that done I'm going to turn construction off and I'm going to drag I'm going to drag out a rectangle that represents my two soft jaws. We're looking at this from the top down now remember that and something like that. I wasn't super careful with it, but that's okay. I'm gonna be able to fix this pretty easy. I'll add my equal constraint and add an equal constraint to both of the left vertical lines. And I'll click on the top horizontal line of each of the rectangles and make those equal. 
So now they're gonna be the same size, but I need the left hand edges or the right hand edge to line up. So what I'm gonna do is use my collinear constraint and click on the left hand edge and that left hand edge. And now as I drag this around, it's starting to act like we would expect vice jaws to act because they're equal sized on both sides. Ready to add some dimensions. So I'm gonna go grab my dimension command and click on this line right here. And I'm gonna type in 5.2. That's the size of the soft jaws that I use. And this thickness right here is going to be one. So I got that gets my size set up. However, um, I still have to get these things located. So what I want to do is I want to center the soft jaws on the uh, bottle opener left to right. So I'll use the horizontal vertical constraint to do this. And the little thing you have to remember is hold down the shift key as I hover across this line. Now remember, I haven't clicked yet. I'm just holding the shift and going across. And eventually I'll see this point with the triangle that appears. I'm gonna click. And when I see that, I'm gonna go now, I'm gonna hold my shift key down. I'm gonna go up the, the horizontal line of one of the soft jaws and I'll click again. Now my left and right edges turn black because I've got that defined and where it's gonna be left and right. So I'm ready to add another dimension. I'll add a dimension between uh, this line and the origin. I could use I could use the construction line there as well. And I'll place that. Now I'm going to use a dimension of a quarter of an inch to start out with. And I'm going to go do the same thing from the origin to the other soft jaw. When I place this one, however, instead of typing in 0.25, when it's blue and expecting input, I'm going to hover my mouse over the 0.25, the original one that I did, and I'm going to click on it. And now you'll see that Fusion lets it, me know that it's going to set that equal to dimension 3. So when I hit enter, now I see the FX out in front of it letting me know it's a function of another dimension. I really wanted the gap between these two to be a quarter of an inch total. So I can go click on the first one and change that to be 0.125. And when I do and hit enter, it changes the other one at the same time. So I only had to change one dimension and it changed both of them. I'm going to finish my sketch and I'm going to go to a home view. Now I'll roll this back over, I guess. And the first thing I want to do is I know that the total height of my soft jaws is an inch and a half. So I'm gonna go some dimension down and then I'm gonna come some dimension up and I'm gonna have those add up to an inch and a half. It's not an exactly a critical step. You can make this whatever. We really only care about how deep the pocket is because the soft jaws are already manufactured for us. So I'm gonna extrude this and this and I'm gonna go down with it. 1.1875 and then I'll hit okay. Now you can see that I've got my soft jaw, my part is sitting on my soft jaw that's where it's going to be rusting when we're ready to flip it over to the other side. But I haven't done a very good job yet because I haven't captured the parts. So that's what I'm gonna work on next. So first I'm gonna create a sketch and I'm gonna choose either the top of the front jaw or top of the back jaw. I'll choose the top of the front jaw. And when I do, what happened that is very hard to see is Fusion projects in the boundary of that soft jaw and turns all the edges uh, invisible. So I've got a closed region. It doesn't look like I do, but that's why I'm only gonna do uh, project in the other faces and not the first soft jaw because it was already did it as part of the sketch that I created. I wanna do some projecting in a geometry. So I'm gonna click on the letter P on my keyboard. And now I'm going to change the section filter into be bodies. And I'll click on the body of the soft jaw and I'll click on the handle itself. And I'll hit okay. And if I want, I can even turn the handle off now. So I don't need this whole I just need the outside profile. So I'll just come and start grabbing geometry here, using my right to left to get the geometry that I want. And to be honest, I probably don't need this radius, that line, or that radius either. I think what I'll do is, let me get rid of this little stuff here. I think what I'll do is I'll just terminate this out to the edges. So I'll start my line command, click on this edge, and just come out and terminate that. And I'll do the same thing over there, and that should work. I've got a region there and a region there of what I want to cut out, so that should be just fine. And I'm going to finish my sketch. Now I'm going to extrude this region and this region up, and this is going to come up 0.3125 to give me my total inch and a half height. And now I have my soft jaws. If I turn on my bottle opener, you can see I have it captured pretty well. And I've got a set of soft jaws that matches my geometry exactly. 
One other thing you might want to do, again, because I made a component, these soft jaws will move wherever they want to go, and I don't really want them to move out of place by accident. So I'm going to go to the Assemble and choose an as-built joint again and click on one of the soft jaws and click on my handle and hit OK. And now everything is locked together. Another question I get asked a lot is, well, shouldn't the soft jaws be slightly bigger in size than the part in case there's any deflection or to, to hold it? I never draw it that way. If I do want to do something like that, I'll do it in cam with a negative stock to leave when I make the profile. So anyway, there is a method for drawing a set of soft jaws that'll perfectly match your geometry. If I were to go back and change this bottle opener design at all, my cut for my soft jaw would automatically update because it's linked to that geometry. So it makes making design changes easy as well. Hope you guys like this one. If you wanna see the other methods for making soft jaws um, by using the part to cut itself out of the soft jaws, and the more advanced way of putting this into a vise and doing the same thing, please let me know in the comments below or else uh, I guess I'll just think that people don't really want to see that and I won't go forward with those videos. So if you have questions, comments, uh, whatever it might be, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching.